In this section, we'll discuss how to print gradient halftones using Accurip out of Photoshop, Corel Draw, or Illustrator. Now, before we dive into Accurip itself, let's first find out why a RIP software is important and why you can't print a gradient using a standard inkjet printer. A halftone image just means that the film is printed in a series of dots versus the linear printing of a traditional inkjet printer. Let's take a look at why that's important. If you try to expose a gradient image without using halftones, the image will only partially expose, meaning at some point when the positive is not dense enough to block exposure light from the screen, it will just stop exposing. Here's an example. This was our gradient image from earlier. See how only the top section of the image was opaque enough to expose onto the screen? What we want to do is print our films in halftone so they will expose properly. Here's a halftone scale. The top of the scale starts at 100% black and it decreases to 10% black. As you can see, the dots in each box become more infrequent as the percentages drop. This is how we create gradient images for screen printing. When it comes to printing grayscale images in either Photoshop, Corel Draw, or Illustrator, you do need to have a rash to image processor or RIP software if you're going to be using an inkjet printer. If you have a high end postscript printer like a laser printer, Sometimes you can print halftones out of that, but you have to be able to print postscript like we just learned. This right here is an example of an image that might look a little postscript, but if you really zoom in and look at the detail here, you'll see that this is all spot color. It just has distressed filters on it, and then even though it looks a little faded and it looks like it might have some shading in it, it is a spot color image. There is an easy way to do um, more of a gradient image like that and convert it into spot color in Photoshop specifically and that's your threshold tool. Your threshold tool will take out all the gradient and all the color information of an image. So if we go to this image right here and go to adjustments and then change to threshold, that's going to turn this into a spot color image. It's going to take out that gradient that we just saw there. If we uncheck preview, you can see this had a gradient in it and it had color in it. It's going to take out both that information and then we can scale that back if we need to. Now, it really limits how much information you can pull out. If you see, most of this gradient is just disappearing here. If we take a look at how that corresponds to a picture, here's a picture of a band. We zoom in so we can see what we're doing. We can take this and take it into threshold, and that takes all the gradient information out of the image. So we could print an image using threshold by using a standard inkjet printer. We would not have half tones and it would not have a gradient, but if you're just starting out, you can manipulate effects using the threshold tool. Let's get back to discussing halftone printing with a RIP software. If we wanted to print this image, we would need to do um, one of two things. A, we would need to color separate it if we want to do a four color process or a simulated process of this image. But you can do really cool looking work by just hitting print as long as it's in grayscale. So let's say you just wanted to do a simple one color design, something like this, these checkered flags. This is only white and black. So using a RIP software, we can get these shading effects with this image by printing simply through AccuRIP. What AccuRIP does is it prints either 100% black, which is 100% of a dot, or as it starts to fade out, it prints in percentages of the dot. So this right here, as it fades to a lighter gray, might be 50 or 40% of that dot. And that's how it creates that gradient effect. So what we're going to do to convert this into a simple halftone image with either of this color image right here or this already grayscaled image is you do want to change it from full color mode into grayscale mode. So since this is already in grayscale mode, I'm going to pop over to this image to show you how to change it. There's two ways to change it from full color to grayscale. First is by going into the image and then mode and then changing from RGB into grayscale mode. That's if you want typically a flat image and take out all the color information whatsoever. If you want to stay in RGB mode, which is this is actually the way that I would recommend doing because RGB mode reads a little true color, is just to take the color out of the specific layer. So instead of changing the whole image to grayscale, we're going to go to adjustments and we're going to work on the specific layer and we're going to desaturate that. What that's going to do is that's going to take out all the colored information. So right now we have an image that can then be printed as a half tone and will show up in halftone dots on the shirt. Now how does this information read to your RIP software? 
Well, basically, if we look at our info tab right here, we can pull over our cursor and we can see the percentage of black that we're going to be printing, where it shows this lighter gray, or actually it's a little bit darker gray shirt right here. We can see up in the corner right here that it's actually a 50% or 63% halftone. If we look at this black part of his pants right here, that right there is 93 and almost 100% black. So this image right here would print 100% halftones because there's not a true solid black color. If we wanted to put text over it or something like that, let's see, let's drop some text into this image. If we created the text in black, this part of the image would print 100% dot, so it would not halftone whatsoever. So that's how to simply convert a colored image into a grayscale and print by using an Accurip software. Let's go a little bit more in depth on how to specifically use the Accurip. Here's our Accurip menu. What I'm going to show right now is how to set your printer up very quickly and then how to change the job information depending on the job that you're going to be doing. If you go to your file and go to setup, we can select what kind of printer that we have. Right now we're going to be using the Epson 4880. I also use the Epson 2200. So depending on the type of printer you have and depending on your ink setup, right now this printer is set up for the tri-bread mode. So we're pulling from the Chromoblast light black selection slot in order to print our film positives. If we were going with black max, we would check all these inks because we'd be pulling from all black ink. Right here you have your ink settings. Less ink is going to put down a little bit less ink density. Um, max ink or more ink is going to put down the most amount of ink possible. If you're running black mask especially, you probably want to go with the middle of the road, probably standard or even less ink. Then you have your resolution. Resolution also dictates how much ink goes down on the paper. Typically if we're running all black ink, we can go with a 4-pass 1440 by 720 and 8-pass 1440 by 720 is going to lay down more ink. The higher resolution that we go, the slower the printer prints. So the lower we can print, if, especially if you're running like a black max system, many times you can print 720 by 720, which is going to be the fastest and most economical ink use of your printer. But you want to ensure that you test a couple of these settings on a couple of your different jobs so that you get your optimal ink density. You should not see light coming through your film. Same thing with the droplet weight. Typically I'm going to run with a medium droplet weight and that's kind of the default setting in Accurip. Depending on the type of printer you have, the Epson 4880 runs in a, either a sheet or a roll format. So if you do have a roll capable printer like the 4080, you want to select your roll setting there. You can also select sheet setting and depending on the size of sheets you can go with your standard settings 13 by 18, 13 by 19. So let's say we are running with our Epson, let's say we're having, we're working with a 1400. We're going to select all black mode and then we're going to go with the most standard 13 by 18 size. Running 720 by, 1440 by 720 standard ink medium density. Typically don't want to select bi-directional high speed. We find that you get better registration with film to film by not selecting this and having the printer print unidirectionally. Then we go how your printer is connected. If we're changing from our 4880 to our 1400, we need to make sure that we have our 1400 driver loaded in here. Right now we don't have a 1400 driver, so we need to load the 1400 driver as a standard print driver before we'd be able to use that printer. So let's change it back to the 4880. Then we'll look at the printer connection, just verify that. Once this is set up, you don't have to set this up every single time. You only have to set it up once. The only thing that you're going to be changing typically is the third screen. How would you like this to be screened? Besides changing the paper size, which would be in screen number one, the other screen that you typically use would be screen number three. Now, accurate dictates the angle of the dot for you, whereas most other RIP softwares, you have to actually go into Photoshop settings, go into Illustrator settings, and manually change the angle. Accurip overrides all those settings. The default setting in Accurip is 22.5 degree angle. And what the angle is, is that how the dots are stacked up on top of each other. So a 90 degree angle would be straight across. 180 degree angle would be straight up and down. 45 degree angle would be 
horizontal like that. You want your angle to not correspond directly to your mesh angle. So meshes are stretched at a 90 and 80, 180 degree angle going like that square on the screen. We don't want to be at a 45 degree angle, we want to be somewhere offset. So a 22.5, a 61 degree angle would be optimal for use. 22.5 is the standard accurate setting. You can also change it and play with angles like 61 degrees is also very popular. Frequency. Your frequency is how many lines there are per inch. So 100 line per inch half tone means there's 100 dots per inch. Typically with screen printing we're going to be working with a 45 uh, line half tone or uh, maybe lower for 35 line half tone or maybe higher 55 line half tone. 35 line half tones would be for your basic gradient images, especially if we're printing more opaque ink on a dark garment. 45 line half tones would be for your spot process work, for your higher color gradient images, uh, printing typically through a 230 mesh. And your 55 line half tone would be for something like a four color process. That's typically all we have to do is set up these angles. We can play between our ellipse and our round dot. Those are the two most types of dots. That's the shape of the dot. Most people use the ellipse dot, but a round dot is also becoming very popular. Once this is set up, let's show you how to print through AccuRip. Let's take this job now and run it through the printer. We'll simply go to our print menu in Photoshop. We're going to want to print registration marks, center crop marks. We don't need a description on this particular image. We're going to change to our AccuRip 4880. Then we'll go to page setup. We want to select our page size, so we go to advanced and we'll select 13 by 18 media. You want to make sure that your page setting here corresponds correctly to your page setting in AccuRip. If they don't correspond correctly, you could run into contradicting information and have problems during printing. Once that is set up, you see our template size has changed here. We can now basically hit print and we're going to rip to the printer. It's going to override our halftone angles and print the 45 or the 50 line halftone that we're going to need for this gradient image. So we just hit print. And you'll notice now in our printer queue, if we look at our 4800 driver, let's find our 4800 driver here. You'll notice that once the print is gone through AccuRip, it's ripping right now, right on the AccuRip screen. Once that status goes into 100%, all the gradient image has been transposed into postscript or halftone dots. And that, from AccuRip, transposes and drops into your printer queue. And your, Ac um, your Epson 4880 driver actually prints the image. We can see that his print has come through on our 4880 driver print from AccuRip. Once this is printed, this will drop out of the queue and our print will be done. If you're using AccuRip to control your Blackmax printer, because a Blackmax printer won't print all black ink without using AccuRip. So if you don't use AccuRip, let's say you're using the Epson 1400, let's say. If you have all black selected here, but you don't print through AccuRip, your printer will only pull from the black cartridge. So in order to properly use your Blackmax system, you need to print through AccuRip. That's very important. So if I'm over here, I need to print through my AccuRip 1400, not my Epson 1400 driver. I want to print, I want to select the correct printer. So on my print screen right here, I do not want to print through my Epson Stylus 4880. I want to print through AccuRip to Epson 4880. That is one thing that you have to remember when printing with a Blackmax system. If you do not print with the AccuRip driver, you'll only be pulling from one black ink, and you will also not be converting into halftones. The thing about AccuRip is if you're working with poor quality artwork, it's going to print the poor quality edges of that artwork, even if it is 100% black in halftones. Let me illustrate right now. If we look at this image, it appears to be crisp and solid. However, even though this is a 100% black image and we are on a text layer, if we look at our image size, we see that this is only a 72 DPI image. So if we zoom in and look closely at this image, you can see what AccuRip is going to do to these edges. That's not 100% black right there. This is 100% black right here, but this edge is not 100% black. In fact, if we look at our info tab to the right, that's only 3% black. So it's going to half tone this entire edge. The best way to ensure that your artwork is quality is to work in 300 dpi and keep the text in separate text layers in Photoshop. The best, best way 
to print solid graphics is to use a vector-based program such as Illustrator or optimally CorelDRAW because that works in vector format and vector format prints 100% solid line every single time. If you are printing through Photoshop, make sure that you are in 300 dpi and that your text is on separate layers. If your text is a part of the image and your image is not 300 dpi, you could run the risk of half toning your text. Now one way to get around that is to print through the standard Epson driver. If we printed through the standard Epson 1400 driver or the standard Epson 4080 driver, it would not half tone our edge. So we would appear to have a higher resolution image than printing through the half accurate, which would then half tone our edges. However, we would take away our black smack capabilities and we'd take away our, some of our ink density capabilities by not printing through the rip. So keep in mind that that is a way to get around some lower quality artwork that you need to print in spot color, but that you do take away some functionality of your printer by the density and not being able to pull from all cartridges at once if you're running the Black Max. The nice thing about working with Accurip is it's super simple. Once your image is color separated on screen, as long as you're hitting print and your print settings are set up, as far as your halftone angle and dot shape in Accurip, it's all you have to do. It automatically does the rest of the work for you, converting it depending on the density of ink of the image. To learn more about the halftone LPI size or the frequency, whether you want to print 45, 35, or 55 line, please also reference the screen mesh selection video on this DVD.